Rick James. <laughs> Open like a window, no window. Look at the videos and stuff that could be you. Because they like to sign you on. And everybody on the East Coast calls me Don. I'm like, what is Don? My, my mom thought I was uh, on Long Island, but I was at Howard Homecoming. Ready? Turn it up. Welcome, welcome. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. I'm your host, Sonya Hudson Payne. And how do I start off each and every single show? You guessed it. I have another great show for you. Coming up in just a few short moments, I have the lead singer of the legendary R&B group 702, Mila Williams. That was a soul clap, if you didn't know. Let me tell you why I'm giving a soul clap. I am giving myself a round of applause, a round of a soul clap, because I successfully pitched and booked. Successfully pitched and booked. Okay, let me be honest. <laughs> let me be honest about this. So the reason, the way I got Mila Williams on this show, building relationships with publicists. If you are breaking into the podcasting world, especially if you're trying to do anything entertainment, celebrity related, build relationships with these people. So in the midst of an interview that I was doing previously, I concluded the interview, my phone sends a notification and lo and behold, the publicist reached out to me and asked if Mila could come on my show. Can she? That was a no brainer. <laughs> I didn't want to seem thirsty. So, you know, I, I took it took about five seconds <laughs> to respond. Hell to the yes. Hard period. Stop. <laughs> so, so happy to have her on the show. Because let me tell you why. I love talking to individuals who don't just exist in this world, in this space. I love having conversations with individuals who live, who leave indel indelible. Child, I'm trying to use a big word. <laughs> <laughs> indelible footprints in society that they don't even have to do anything more because whatever they put out into the universe, it just lives. It exists. I love individuals like that. This is something that I aim to do in my personal life, just leaving a legacy. So I'm encouraging all of you to, to leave a legacy as well. But Mila Williams, 702. Let me just run down my favorite 702 songs. Stilo. Stilo, can we get it together? Where my girls at? They don't make songs, R&B songs like that. How many of you are just like me? You're just wondering, like, where has R&B gone? Where has it gone? It just seems to have disappeared somewhere. We're in this new genre of music that we are still trying to understand. We are in this space where A&R isn't what it used to be, where promotion and marketing isn't used to be. This whole space of music is just so different. Okay, if you are an avid Sign You On Air listener, I was having a conversation with Mr. Dalvin of Jodeci and um, legendary rapper Chingy. And we were talking about how back in the day, back in the Dizzy, we used to open up magazines, Vibe, The Source, those type of magazines. And if you were interested in becoming a singer, a rapper, whatever, they had the address of these record labels inside of these magazines or in the telephone books. They don't even have telephone books anymore. And the only thing that you had to do was locate the address of the telephone number, show up in person unannounced, <laughs> or call the telephone and introduce your body of work. Sometimes it would have you audition on the spot. Nowadays, it's just like, okay, you know, let's find the latest singer on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter. So I am so curious to see how Mila Williams, the lead singer of 702, has managed to create such beautiful music. They created this music when they were still in high school. Singing about love <laughs> and a whole bunch of topics that high school girls should not be singing about. But I was 
I was here for it. You couldn't tell me that they weren't grown. <laughs> I was here for it in my young adult life. You, who remembers? Um, <laughs> there were so many songs that we used to sing back then that we had no business singing. I remember being in the seventh grade and singing Karen White's Superwoman. Singing all the lyrics <laughs> like a woman scorned. I was only in the seventh grade. <laughs> you could not tell me that I didn't understand the meaning behind those words. So once again, I was singing 702 songs, singing Superwoman, all these type of lyrics. If you put those type of songs, that type of music on in today's space, it still resonates. People still know all the lyrics. It's to the point where my generation, we've introduced 702 to our children. And if you was fast and you got a grandchild <laughs> at this age, <laughs> your grandchildren are also singing 702 songs. 702 has really transcended time to the point where there was like maybe a few weeks ago, a few months ago, there, were, there was a TikTok challenge using their songs. And then even most recently, um, there's a series on Amazon Prime. It's called um, Run the World. I believe that's called. It's called Run the World. And it's an all-girl cast, female-led cast. And they decided to do a social media video to Where My Girls At. I just thought it was so, so amazing because it just really tapped into this nostalgia of where I was when I first heard those lyrics, that music, and the impact that it made on my life. Artists like that, I wonder, do they really, really, really understand how their body of work, work has really shaped individuals' experiences, um, how it has really shaped an era, how it has transcended time? A lot of times we take things for granted. We don't even know how we're moving in spaces. And it, it isn't until someone kind of stops us and says, do you know what you said or what you did really impacted me? Case in point, I was talking to a, a childhood friend the other day and she called me and she wanted to tell me something that she deemed um, negative in her life. And I didn't my point from my point of view, it wasn't negative at all. So I decided to just give her some words of encouragement. And she said, you know what, can you like write that down for me and possibly put it in a frame? Because every time I go into that negative headspace, I just want to remember your words. And I'm just like, huh, what, what, what did I say? So you never know how you are impacting individuals. That's why I always implore people, encourage people to spread love and light because you never know how your energy is going to affect someone's next step, steps. So that's what uh, 702 did for me. Mila Williams, when I tell you she is a sanger child, a sanger all throughout this conversation, even when she joins the Sign You On Air studio, trust me, you might just see me shifting a little bit. If you start to see me do this, that's because I really want to break out into a song. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fighting the impulse, but I might do it. I just want to live life, whatever I want to do that's going to put a smile on my face. I'll do it. And I encourage you all to do the same. So like I said, Mia Williams is going to be joining us in just a few short moments, but I want to introduce a new segment called Asking for a Friend. This is Sonia Sonia on air. Air. So Lately, people have been sliding in my DMs or stopping me on the street like, hey, Miss Media Ing. Love it, love it, love it. And they've been asking me questions. And some of the questions are very, very personal. So they will lead it like, I'm asking for a friend. It's not about me. Once again, I'm asking for a friend. So this question that was posed to me was, how soon is it to post your boyfriend or girlfriend on social media? My answer is any day ending in Y is too soon to post your girlfriend or your boyfriend on social media. Let me tell you why. Calm down. Calm down for all the folks in them who 
showing Pookie, Ray Ray, Tay Tay, Johnny, Billy Bob, Anthony, Keith, you name it, <laughs> showing their boo things on social media. Because you show a man or, okay, in this case, women, women, you show your boyfriend, let's say on March 1st, then on April 1st, you're dogging him out on social media talking about he ain't shh. And then this is your new boo. So we've gone through about 10 of your relationships. I feel like, you know, your child and I got a new daddy. <laughs> like, mommy, is that my new daddy? Oh, no, that's my new uncle. OK, it's just too much. I'm just tired of people living in a space where you are doing things that resembles be, being in a contractual marriage. Social media just gives people the opportunity to know too much about you. Know too much about you. I was listening to a conversation today and it was saying that when Facebook was created, it was a way to stay connected with your family and friends. Not in today's space. The purpose of Facebook and all social media platforms has drastically changed. It is a place for self-proclaimed judges, lawyers, jury, doctors, psychiatrists, cheaters, liars, manipulators, you name it, to just air their dirty laundry and to make it seem like they're really doing something, but they ain't. Let me tell you something. Now that I mentioned Facebook, Facebook is triggering for me. It really, really is. Because it's it's a, a platform where that's the only social media platform that I connect with people that I know. When you locate me across every social media platform, it is other than Facebook, it is full of individuals that I don't know. Once again, you have to build and create a different network outside of what you know, because those people that you know, they're not supporting you. Mm -hmm. They're not supporting you at all. So just make sure. And, and that's that's going to be like a, a, a dangerous mental headspace for you to be in because you're like, wait a minute. I've known these people for so long. And then you embark upon this new journey and you would think that they would, you know, support. Oh, no, 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 no. Child, they just want to tap into your glory and not even understand your glory. What I forgot to do. I say all the subscribe. <laughs> Make sure that you subscribe to sign you on here. Sign you on here streams, of course, every major platform. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you hit the notification button. So back to the question. How soon is it to post your boyfriend on social media? I'll say it again. In any day ending in Y, it is too soon to post your boyfriend or girlfriend on social media. Something should just be personal. And I think that when you are exploring or navigating through a relationship, it's tricky. That's a lot of hard work. It is. I'm at the, at the point where I, I just get overwhelmed just talking on the phone. Like I spoke to you yesterday. Like I spoke to you this morning. It's, it just seems like too much hard work. And one of the questions also that I'm going to ask Mila and I'm finding when I just said that, it's because when you are booked and busy building a brand, those things, it just seems as if you no longer have time for it. Because I'm like, the, the time, the amount of time that I'm spending talking on the phone, I'm just like, I could be, I could be working, could be working, trying to do better. So don't be the, the judge and jury, the lawyer, you know, that's going to give your opinion <laughs> about what I said. So, um, Submit your questions to me. DM me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Sonya underscore on air. Or you can just email me at Sonya at SonyaOnAir.net. And in the subject section, just put asking for a friend. And your question could make its way onto Sonya on air. And after you do that, make sure you subscribe to Sonya on air. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you hit the notification button. That way, every time I upload an all new celebrity conversation, you'll be the first ones to know. So let's do this. Let's just take a break for some commercials. And um, I'll be right back with Mila Williams, lead singer of 702. 
Stilo, and I dig the way you move and the way you do your thing. Told you. I told We only, what, 20 minutes into the show, and I told you I couldn't fight the urge. So we'll be right back with Mila Williams of 702. <laughs> This is Sonya on Air. This is Sonya on Air. It's time to go shopping, and you're just in time for the old new Sonya on Air Spring Summer Merchandise Collection. I owe that one to Miss Sheree Whitfield. She by Sheree. You know, it's a spring summer collection. Do you work out on the regular? Fuel your cart goals with Instacart, the go-to service for quick delivery straight to your home. Use the special Sign You On Air link below. This, this is, is Sign You On Air. Air. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. How are you today? Let me tell you something. I'm going to be honest and transparent. This made my day. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Let me no, no, thank you. Thank you for blessing my platform. But I really wanted to ask you the first question is, do you even understand the impact that you as an individual has made on people like me? Do you even understand that? Um, probably not. <laughs> I'm grateful, though. I mean, no, I'm, I'm super humble. Thank you and honored to gosh. I mean, I never know how to take that. Thank you so much. I'm 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 grateful. That's just like a huge blessing. You know what I mean? Like to have had the opportunity to have people like yourself even feel like that. That's just like yes, yes, I'm like, really, and, yes, <laughs> Thank you. really. And that speaks volumes to who you are as an artist because you started creating music when you were still in high school. Yeah, we're grown and we're still singing the lyrics till today. I know, which is crazy. I'm so grateful for that. Like, there's been like this whole resurgence, if you will, of like, I guess the 90s era. And so I'm just like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> oh, I'm, back. Yes, I'm grateful. Like, it's weird. It's, um, it's a blessing because, you know, so social media is interesting. It's weird. It's a different thing. It wasn't around when I was around. And so um, I have this love hate relationship <laughs> with social media. Uh, but it's it's so cool because it can do things like create your songs to all of a sudden go viral and all that type of stuff. And just kind of, I don't know, it, it introduces the younger generation, you know, to our music. I'm, I'm just grateful for all of that because it's been like 25 plus, 25 plus years. Yes. 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 <laughs> and it's just crossing generations because I'm a 15 year old woman and I have a 28 year old daughter. And uh, we are. No, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're both listening to "Get It Together," Stilo. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, I was as I was preparing for this conversation, I said, you know, I was singing these lyrics when I probably didn't even know what they meant. For example, <laughs> you don't know the pain that I feel. You're it's taking pain. my love for granted, and you just want to see it your way. I was, Why was I singing that song as a teenager? <laughs> at a marriage <Marisla. laughs> No, you know, it's, it's so funny story. It's, it's, it's funny you should say that because I was in, I was like 17. Um, Irish, which meant, I, Lamisha and I were like 17, which meant Irish probably was like 15. She's two years younger than us. It's so bizarre. We, we laugh about it now, but we say, you know, like when I sing it live, I always say that. I'm like, I had no idea what I was singing about. <laughs> and I remember, literally recorded that song in the middle of, of the school year, we flew straight from Vegas um, right after school to a session in LA. And in between takes, we were doing homework. And um, Donnell Jones wrote and produced that record. And it took me three, it took three days for us to complete that song, which was so simple in my mind. I'm like, this is such a simple song. And I thought, I, you know, I thought I had done a great job, and, but it wasn't, I wasn't delivering how he needed me to, but there was, there was a method to his madness. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's one of but I think I was so young and hadn't had that experience that even though I may have sounded good, he needed yeah. that pain and 
depiction in that emotion. Yes. <laughs> and I was frustrated. I'm like, I'm like, oh, so as a grown woman, can you now relate to that song a lot better and differently? Let me take my glasses off for this so you can see my face. Girl, look. <laughs> I say that live too. I'm like, now I can <laughs> I can sing it 10 times over and unfortunately probably have been through this song. Yes. It's, the worst. it's the worst. I'm like, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> So you mentioned working with Donnell Jones. That that's huge. I love him. He's so talk decent. about the experience in the studio. So he wanted you to tap into your emotion a little bit more with the song "Get It Together." Share another story working in the studio with Donnell Jones. Okay. Oh, he's gonna kill me, but I have since told him this. I don't know if he remembers, but <laughs> it's so bizarre initially. Um, we had never worked with him before. I was a fan, of course, but I, I didn't really know how he was as a writer producer. And he had us, um, well, he had what my, let me speak for myself. My memory was uh, he had me, of course, we doing things over and over. I was used to that. That's fine. That's the process of recording. But he had an interpreter, like he had someone speaking to me as he whispered to me. <laughs> he would link, I was recording, and then they, what? what? I know. I was like, I was, you're right there, buddy. like what's happening? <laughs> but I, I, I love I think it happens a lot though in the industry. It's, it was so bizarre, but you know what I've learned that people who are geniuses such as himself, they are a little different, you yeah. know, and it ba balances out. <laughs> yeah. um, but I love him so much, so kind. I um, He's out here in, in Atlanta where I'm based as well. So we run into each other from time to time. I ran into him recently, a few months back for a, um, we both were doing something for St. Jude's um, for cancer for children. And he's always so just consistent every time I see him. He did an event for me back in the day for uh, my, my foundation. Uh, didn't ask me for anything, just showed up for me. And, you know, I appreciate it. He said that you know, the cause was near and dear to his heart and he showed up for me and, and saying, nice. I'm just like, this is what it's about. You know, it's like about paying forward and, and we should be able to show up for each other in our time of need. And I mean, yes. I know it's just, he's just a cool dude, you know, so I'm just happy to see him out touring and stuff again and getting the flowers that he deserves because he's really talented. Yeah. And I'm glad to see a whole bunch of artists getting the flowers that they deserve, especially you and, and 702. I just want to kind of rewind the time clock just a little bit, because I know that as kids, we are always having these big dreams of becoming someone. Did you become who you thought you would be when you were dreaming as a kid? Yes and no, because... Although I loved to sing as a kid, I've been singing since I was seven. That's the first time I sang on a microphone, which was in church, um, in the church choir. It was like my first solo at like seven years old. So I, I learned then that I really enjoyed singing and that I maybe had, you know, a knack for it, you know, if you will. Uh, I'm not half bad at this. <laughs> um, but I never knew if I wanted to necessarily be like a big music star. I just knew I wanted to do something on television um, or something in broadcasting or journalism. I wanted to go to college because I saw my sister go to college. She went to an HBCU, so I was living vicariously through her. <laughs> but then 702 happened. But I just always knew I wanted to do My mom, may she rest in peace, she just passed in October. She would always tell me that I always told her as a little girl, I'm going to buy you a big mansion and I'm going to be rich. <laughs> I don't mm. remember saying that. I don't remember saying that. But I guess I always knew I wanted to do something great. Um, I had no idea it would lead to this with 702. Absolutely not. I was always a one-man band. Uh, I sang throughout elementary, and my mother had me singing all throughout Vegas. As a young girl, I performed all kinds of talent shows and fashion shows. I, I would model and sing. <laughs> um, she, my mom just had me pretty active as a, as a young girl once we realized that that I did have talent. Um, he didn't force me to do anything, but I really, I enjoyed it. But I, I wasn't certain, but I also was good in school. So I wasn't certain that I wanted to be a, a big singing star. No, I wanted to go to college and I wanted to do, like I said, broadcasting or journalism or be an attorney. 
Mm. So then when did life take a shift where you said, you know what, I want to do this professionally and who helped you make that transition to singing professionally? So I, um, let's see, because I, I, I went in the studio for the first time when I was like 13, like by myself. I went in, in the studio and recorded a demo. I think I recorded Whitney Houston's Miracle and I got frustrated Ooh. much harder than I thought. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I quit at like 13 for like five seconds. So then... <laughs> Right. So um, I got to high school, which was like a year later, <laughs> the year or two later, I realized I really do enjoy singing. All the stuff at school, you know, the black people, this and that. Then by the time I got to say, a junior in high school, I switched schools. I changed over to a performing arts high school, which is where I met my other two bandmates, um, Lamisha and her sister, Irish. And they had just, they were already signed to Motown. And we were so proud of them. Like all of us at the school were so like, oh my gosh, we got stars at the school. Like they were on, no, they're they legit. No, they were on BET with, with Donnie Simpson. No, they're really famous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Bannister, you know, a group of us, we were so happy for them. And then all of a sudden um, they were doing like, I guess some group group shifting and member, member changes. And I auditioned, they asked me to audition. I auditioned and um, yeah, I guess sort of kind of, not really, but sort of kind of, you know, the short and the story where the rest is history. Um, so wait a minute. So, so they were already in a group, Lamisha and Irish. They asked you to yeah. audition. You now joined the group. But how did you become the lead singer then in somebody else's group? Oh, so that was not, on, I don't think that was on purpose. That actually happened I think, by default, um, unintentionally. I do realize that, I guess the executives realized that I had a particular sound maybe. For me, you know, I Wait, have to uh, come in and, and I don't see you, and I can barely hear you. Is I I don't know if you're on a phone and someone's calling. No, I shouldn't be. Um, hold on. Yeah, I don't see you. Can you? I hear well, you, but I don't see you. Hold on. I, okay. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> That usually happens. Is someone calling? Oh, so just so you know, I told Brand. No, I don't. I it shouldn't be. No, everything is blocked. Or I just thought. Well, I turned everything we... off. Yeah, I still can't see the picture. Brandon. Earlier, I don't know if he told you. I told you know, that earlier, Brandon. No, no, I didn't hear you. You told me. That's so strange. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I see you, but you, you said you told Brandon what? I was having technical issues earlier. I had no Wi-Fi for hours. We had an outage in my area. Oh, wow. You know what? Can leave yes. the studio and then try to come back in. That's what I'll do. Yes. That's what I'll do. I'll yes. remove you and then you come back. So technical difficulties, it happens in podcasting. So this is another podcasting tip. Just get through it. Just keep on talking. So that's like really an aha moment for me. I didn't even know. So Mila, minding her own business in high school, she sees two girls, Lamisha and Irish, starting a group and they are successful. They are reorganizing and adding more members to the group. They ask her to audition. She does. And then she joins the group. 702 becomes 702, record label executives realize that she has a voice, talent, and makes her the lead singer. That happens so often in a lot of groups where when they start the group, everyone thinks that they are going to be on the same playing field. Okay, you sing this verse, you sing that verse. Okay, you got two verses, I'll get two verses. That's how a lot of groups initially start. And then something happens and then one of the members are pushed into the forefront and then it causes dysfunction and tension amongst everyone. Okay, about let's that. There you yeah. go. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. So you were talking about the, the record label pushing you to the forefront. Right, pretty much. Pretty much. So yeah, when I joined, um, so initially, you know, it was a four girl group, a quartet, and then I joined and Michael Bivens decided to just only keep myself um, myself and another girl auditioned together and we both were kind of like 
you know, um, in this, gosh, it was like a boot camp, if you will. And uh-huh. we had we had to audition to make sure that it made sense, to make sure we were the right fit. But he ended up just keeping me and making it a trio. Um, mm-hmm. So by the time I was the only one that had joined the group, I needed to now get on these songs that were already recorded before I had joined to add me, you know, just to add me. So I think initially the plan was to just bring me in as a, um, to help, to assist with um, lead vocals, just just kind of bring in more additional lead vocals so it wasn't just all on one person. Um, But then I came in and then I just started leading the songs. They put me on like just a background first and then of course I would come in and like split the difference between Lamisha who was already on the, the, the vocals, the leads, and she mm-hmm. she take one she take one you know they leave her on one or whatever and then I come in and sing the other part so that there was an introduction of this new girl, but mm-hmm. ultimately it just like went from me being on just one verse to okay one verse and a bridge to okay both verses both verses right. and a bridge okay the entire song, and it didn't always happen that way but more often than not um, that's what just the producers and the executives ended up just going with I think. I mean, looking back now as an adult in hindsight, I think I just had a sound, a radio friendly sound that they just were, um, I guess, keen, uh, what is fancy. It was, they it, they fancied it and they were just very, um, it was something that clearly they were looking for. I don't know. I didn't listen. I I was just trying not to get replaced. I'm like, I was, I'm coming in, I'm coming in as a filling. And so everybody's replaceable in my mind. Okay. <laughs> so right. it was like, I'm just doing my job, but. You know, unfortunately, it definitely took its toll on the, on the group, you know, because there was just all these different dynamics and different, you know, we were young and different feelings and everybody was just kind of not understanding what was happening. And I'm sure there were things that we weren't being told. And, you know, goodness, it's a, it's a shrewd business, you know. Um, but at, at the end of the day, though, that's what it is. It is a business. And at, at that time, it, it was kind of like, let me just shut up and do as I'm told, you know. Now, of course, as a whole grown adult. I definitely would have, you know, asked more questions or challenged yeah. things or, you know, maybe done things a little differently. But at the time, I'm just like, oh, OK, I just got here. OK, I got to sing this. I got to sing that. I got to. I'm just singing. <laughs> right. Right. Um, right. But that's but so listen. good that now as an adult that you can kind of look back and learn those lessons so that you can now show up better um, in the Absolutely. music industry. But do you find we we see this happening a lot when it comes to groups. So do you find that when groups are dismantled, do you Mm -hmm. find that it is because of the record label or it's because of the nuanced difficulties of people just can't really work together? It could be. I think it's a little bit of both, you know, um, because we started out. We like, first of all, I always say, let me just put the disclaimer out there that we had way more great times than bad. But. It was not an easy road for me, you know. Um, I went through a lot. I went through a whole lot, <laughs> actually. Uh, but thankfully, you know, now we can talk about it. You know, we've that's so old and water under the bridge, and we've matured and we've forgiven and all of that good stuff. You know, I'm I'm sure I wasn't the only one who went through things. I mean, we all have our own stories and experiences. But unfortunately, I do feel like it's a little bit of both because. On the executive side, like I just explained, you have the record label just kind of telling you, hey, this is what I need you to do. And then when you're with your counterparts, you guys have to have one mind, body and soul and be like joined at the hip. You know, we are you're not really allowed when you're in a group to have any individuality. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you do, you stick out like a sore thumb. And that's not the purpose of being in a group back then anyway, you know. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's, it's just kind of, it creates this tension and like this weird synergy or lack thereof, you know, and there's like animosity that just naturally happens over time, you know, especially when you're developing and becoming a, a young woman and there's adolescence and, you know, and you're really still trying to find yourself. And, um, at the end of the day, you're like, I'm just, you know, you want to just do what makes sense in your mind, which is your job right but that's gonna create discord and and dissension and just naturally jealousy you know because one is looking like well if you're singing all the parts and then that means you get more face time or whatever the case may be you know you just start feeling away but i mean listen i was the lead singer uh but 
I, I, I never felt like it, you know, um, mm-hmm. aside from using my voice because, right. um, and I didn't have that type of attitude, but looking back, I mean, now I'm like, darn, maybe, maybe, maybe if I would have had that type of attitude, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe we could have went further, who knows, but I wasn't, I was never a mean girl. And I hate to say that, unfortunately, you know, nice girls finish last. So, mm-hmm. um, and this is not to play the victim or be like, I'm all perfect. Absolutely not. We all had, a, a, I think, a contribution to the ultimate um, demise. But I came into a situation that was already, you know, established. Yeah. Um, a situation that was a family um, mm-hmm. originated um, group. And it just wasn't always the easiest. And it yeah. had come. And like you say, here I come out of the blue and become this lead singer is like you know yeah. how dare she you know so and that naturally stuff like that that's that's gonna naturally create you know some some drama down the line you know what i'm saying yeah. um and but 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 listen i told them since then I'm, I'm like listen i i get how you guys felt or how you know i can i can admit that like i get how if it was the other way around i'm sure i would have been the same way um it's just a difference in my how I probably would have approached it, but you know we all have different personalities. But it's okay. It, things happen. The the great thing is we got great classic songs out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got some hits yeah. out of it, yes. and um, the music is still going. So I'm happy about that, and and the fact that we are good now. Like that's what really matters. Yes. You know? Yes, yes. And the numbers don't lie. Those numbers really, really solidify 702 as legendary artist and group. Was there ever a point in time where you and um, Lamisha and Irish felt like the industry didn't give you the recognition that you deserved? No, I don't feel like that. You know, I just talked about that yesterday briefly on my live, which I never go live, but I just felt, I don't know. I was like, why not? Because I was already up. Really? <laughs> up, up. I was already up bright eyed and bushy tails. I was like, oh, I'll go live. I had just done another interview. So I went live and the word underrated came up. And um, that word is, um, I get that word a lot, you know, whether it's in interviews, uh, whether it's a question posed as a question or whether it's from a fan or just in general in conversation. And, you know, I never really, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't feel underrated. I feel like what was supposed to happen for me happened. You know what I mean? I feel like um, the, the road, maybe I took some left turns, you know when maybe I should have gone right. But in my mind, and not to get all deep, but I always feel like, hey, God knows what one can handle. And I don't know that I was supposed to achieve, you know, uh, an even higher level of success than I already have. I don't know Mm -hmm. that I would have been able to handle it. (laughs) You know, so I'm like, this is, this is, this was just my fate. And it just, you know, um, to me, like you, like how you started out with, you know, are, are you aware of the impact? It's like I know because the music is still going that that we were effective, mm-hmm. um, and how much is sampled today that you know it, we did our job. But I think it's just how I was raised, and mm-hmm. just me trying my best to really stay grounded and humble. Um, that I just don't allow myself to get a little you know, aside myself, Uh, maybe, 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 maybe I don't realize um, the impact because maybe, as you just said, maybe, maybe we weren't on um, acknowledged enough, but I don't, I don't look at it like that because Mm. um, I think there's so many things that we, we have accomplished and that we were um, acknowledged for that I'm, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with everything. Like I'm kind of like, so all of this is still so surreal to me. It's so old now, but it's still so surreal. And when I'm reminded about, you know, things like Good Burger and the Stuart Little soundtrack and, you know, things that are just random, but that were pretty awesome to be a part of, you know what I mean? And, you know, of course, the legendary for the for the kids who remember back in the day, the, the cousin Skeeter and <laughs> uh, being a part of that whole, you know, Nickelodeon Good Burger situation. And I'm just like, those things are things that I can, you know, recant and tell my my family, my, my, my smaller, you know, the younger generation about, I would say my son, but he, you know, he doesn't care, but, uh, (laughs) you know, but those like, like, you know, my, my niece, she's older now. She's, she's, um, she just graduated college, but she's, you know, she comes from that era of, 
um, the cousin Skeeter and, mm-hmm. you know, those the programs that were on when she was really little. And I'm just excited that I can say, or, or, or some things she wasn't privy to, she was much younger, but Netflix, you know, is now running like say Moesha. And if you blinked, you missed us. Yes. But in sister, sister, but Hey, if you turn that on and, and, and you happen to, you know, just watch it and binge it, you might see your aunt, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, things like that are really cool to me. You know what I mean? Um, Yes, it's, we know there are a plethora of things that uh, could have been way more substantial and way bigger. Absolutely, but you know, I'm not I'm not too mad at, at the things that we did accomplish. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just try to look at it. I guess what I'm saying, my final point is just I I've gotten to a place in life now where I'm truly grateful, and I always I've always been grateful, but I'm I'm to the point now where I'm like looking at life and just things as you know not empty you know and the silver lining which is like do you understand how many millions of people in the world strive to be famous singers and god chose little me you know yeah yeah i'll take it i will take it (laughs) but you know out of out of everything that you said what really resonated with me and what has been proven to be true your humility and you're grounded and you are spiritually connected. And I'm a firm believer too. That's why I was smiling throughout everything she was saying is oh, whatever God you. has purpose for you is purpose for you. And we just That's can't it. be like, well, why didn't you give me this? He gave you such a plentiful career Listen. and life that we just have to say thank you for what you did give me because you chose That's me. It. That's Period. it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I, I went through a phase. Don't get me wrong. I'm human. I, I definitely went through a phase probably in like my 20s where I was feeling like, Dag, you know, like, why aren't we doing that? Or why can't I do that? Or I could do that. Or, you know what I mean? I, I went through that for a second for sure. Um, mm-hmm. and felt like, well, I want to be on that scale. Like, but I had to ultimately really understand that I had a larger purpose, yeah, which is which was my son. You know, I I prayed and asked God not to. Um, I said, Look, God, I want a son, um, please give me a son. Boom, okay, you're having a son, and I'm like, Oh, also, God, please don't, don't let him have autism. Like I literally prayed for that specifically. Mm. God, please don't let my son have autism because it was like, it was really prevalent. It was growing and growing and it was becoming more popular. And yeah. I'm just like, I know boys, it was kind of new to us, but I knew that it was like, for whatever reason, it's more prevalent than boys. And I'm like, oh, and by the way, please don't let him have, <laughs> have autism. And, you know, I'm sure God chuckled and, you know, I was mad for a minute. I'm like, didn't I ask you not to? <laughs> You know, but it was like I realize now that there was there's just a greater design for my life, you know, and um, having a child on the spectrum has completely shifted and saved my life because mm. had I gone any higher on the scales of what folks think 702 could have or should have or even Mila uh, could have or should have done. Uh, let me tell you something. Like, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. <laughs> I, feel, I, feel I don't you. know where I would be. I'm just saying, like, I'm so grateful that I'm in my right mind and not somewhere strung out and not somewhere, you know, gosh, do you know the accessibility of all the crap out there at such a young age? Yeah. The narcotics, the drugs, the sex drugs and rock and roll, as they say, my God, today, like, yeah, it yeah. just wasn't, he had to, he, I feel like he snatched me out, like, real quick, like, mm. hey, let me, let me, <laughs> Let me yeah. keep her balanced. Like, let me. Uh-huh. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna continue to bless my daughter, but let me just pull her on in because <laughs> I mean, I probably could have been if, if it wasn't for my mother and grandmother's prayers. I probably would have been a wild child. Yeah, you know, I say the same thing when I found out. No, a few years after my daughter was no, I think when she was a teenager, I looked at her and I said, "She saved my life," because had I not given birth to her. <laughs> I probably would have been this wild Listen, child woman. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I was on my way. I was in my. I had my son at 31, mm-hmm. and I think it was 30 when I when I got pregnant. And so yeah, like right at 29, I was just wilding out. <laughs> oh I was, yeah, I, I was. I, off when I got children. pregnant, I was I was a senior in college, about to graduate, mm. and you know, okay. college life. Yeah, you are really yeah. out there. So. That I can baby imagine. grounded me. Yeah, grounded <laughs> me. But you know what? 
And on two occasions during this conversation, you introduced your mother. You started talking about your mother. And in preparing for this conversation, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's something that we have in common because I recently also lost my mom. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. But I wanted to take the opportunity because I'm always thinking of ways of making sure that my mother's memory lives on. And I Mm -hmm. see her memory living on in the way that I interact with my daughter. Mm hmm. What subconscious ways do you find yourself mothering your son? And you're looking at him like, my mother used to do the same thing to me. (laughs) It's a little bit of everything. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Yes. I mean, first of all, I know if he could really talk, bless his heart. I I know he, I'm sure he lets me have it in his head all the time. I know, I knew I get on his nerves (laughs) without the shadow of a doubt. Um, just, I'm, I'm like, I constantly nitpick and I just can't help it. You know, I'm wiping his face constantly. I'm making sure he's got, you know, moisturizer on his elbows. I'm, I mean, it's just every little thing. I'm like, Lord, let me leave him alone. I can't even help it. And my mom yes. was the same way. She wasn't as, you know, in my face like that, but she, she was very vocal and, um, you know, she was very maternal. Um, Zach was like her baby. I'm like, ma, you know. I know you. I know that's definitely your your second, your third child that you never had. But <laughs> I'm like grandma. Like I got it. You know what I mean? I'm like I got it. My no, let me do. You know, it's grandma. So I'm like okay. I see right. so much in myself for my mom. Like mm-hmm. initially, you know, I wanted to. I wouldn't try to like downplay it or deny it. But I mean, first of all, I look just like her, so I'm a twin. <laughs> Especially when I put my glasses on. So it's scary sometimes. I'm looking like, oh my god, I look like that lady, and it's like. I mean, which is a beautiful thing. It's just a trip, you know, genetics. Um, But it's funny because Lamisha just recently told me, she said, gosh, I see so much of your mom in you now. Because I was always the one in the group that was kind of quiet, wouldn't say, you know, wouldn't speak up, scared to speak up. Lamisha never had a problem speaking up. She was always bold and vocal. And that's my my mom was that way. Um, No filter, you know, just. My mom too. Listen, just, just say whatever, whatever, just. Not and not and not taking it like unapologetic about it, you know. Yes. Um, and so now I finally have that. Uh, it took me forty plus years to get there, <laughs> but I finally have that. Um, that being a, that strong woman who is unafraid or unapologetic to speak my truth and to just and not this is not to be disrespectful to anyone in any way, but to finally, especially in business in a male dominated business be able to say, no, I'm not going for that. Or no, I don't like that. Or no, I refuse to do that. It, it took me a very long time to get mm. there. And I'm finally there. And so it's so funny. Yeah, Lamisha just told me that the other day at one of our other shows, she was just like, gosh, I see Miss Marianne and you. She's like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I'm uh, finding since my mom transitioned. Now, when I look at myself, I'm seeing a lot of my mom and me as well. This is how the legacy and the memory lives on. So I just wanted to yes. create a space here to yes. let your mother's memory live on. Thank and it's so you. crazy because as I um, spoke at my mom's um, funeral, that was the title of it, just being unapologetically Black. Mm. Oh, and wow. That was the true wow. definition. Look at of that. My mom. Yeah, I so we that. definitely have something in common. But mm-hmm. you know, successful um, singer, businesswoman, we are told that women can often have it all, but it also comes with sacrifices. Mm, As a a successful woman who is also a mom, what sacrifices had, have you had to make? Oh my goodness. Um, so one of the main sacrifices I've made intentionally, um, was just, you know, kind of putting my career on the back burner and just kind of choosing things here and there that I'll be a part of or that I'll do. And, and, focusing on my son, raising my son, because although my mother moved here to help me with him um, pretty much from the time that he was born or like when he was a really small child, I still would make certain that I made time for my son. That I made certain that he knew that I was mom. And, you know, even though my mom, like, she held it down, of course. Grandmas don't mind. But yes. I never wanted her to... First of all, I'm like, that. that isn't her responsibility. She's here to help you, not to you know, take your place, you know what I mean? So I would make sure that there was a time when I was going to the studio every night, gosh, at like, um, I don't know, after 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 I picked him up from school and after like maybe homework, 
um, and dinner. I go to the studio until like four in the morning mm. and got home, got a few hours of sleep and was there to t- take him to school. That was my job, not my mom's. She right. would if I wanted her to, but I would never, that wasn't her responsibility, you know? So, and that happened for like a whole year straight. However, there were things that, that I just put on pause. Um, I, I, I always tell people, I was having this conversation the other day. I always tell people, I say, listen, when I realized that my son needed me as much, much as he does, mm-hmm. I slowed all the way down, you know? Um, I stopped running out, you know, trying to catch every audition and running out, trying to be a part of, you know, every event here in Atlanta. Cause you know, in Atlanta, honey, we have Lord, every day is an event. They have some, it's something every day. <laughs> Everybody has a red, blue, white, green, pink carpet. It's always something happening in Atlanta. Um, and I did that for a while and I got burnt out and I realized, I'm like, listen, this is not even, this isn't even me anymore. This doesn't even make sense. So I put a lot of things off and just chose to just focus on my son to really be that mother to him. So now I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm back to work now, um, you know, with 702 and we toured for a while from like 2017 to 19, right before COVID. But I slowed all the way down intentionally because I, I had to, I had to be there for my son um, because his dad is also in the industry and we both travel so much, but I'm like, one of us has to be his parent, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, he, he didn't ask to come here. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in that. And so I chose to, you know, just kind of fall back a bit and, 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 and you step up. And you kind it over. Um, your child's father is a music soul child, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. So he's always busy as well. And so, yeah. you know, we try to do our best at balancing, um, gosh, career in raising Zach, co-parenting together. But it's, 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 all, it's not always easy, you know? Um, yeah. But we've done a pretty good job of maintaining, um, you know, the friendship and being able to sometimes still work together and still raise Zach. So Mm -hmm. sometimes, like when my mother was still alive, we were able to travel together and do things together. Um, But overall, like, you know, he understands what I do for Zach and he appreciates it so much. Like he knows that I go hard for Zach. Like he knows that I'm like, I'm probably a little... I'm sure he tells me, okay, I'm a little too overbearing. I know I am, but <laughs> <laughs> me too. It's okay. I'm, I'm okay. Clean. I can't help it. He's my only child. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I only like, have one. I love on her every single day. Can't I can't help it. I just walk by and touch her. Yes. <laughs> and my son now is 14. So he's like a moody. I'm about to go to ninth grade. Freaking Ooh, I pray for you. <laughs> high schooler. And those vibes. Oh, it's like, oh, that attitude is a mess, but I don't care. I still grab him and hug him and kiss him. <laughs> but yeah, his dad his dad just looks at me and he shakes his head like, oh my God, my, my poor son. <laughs> but, he, no, but he appreciates it though, because he I'm knows, sure he, does. he does. He knows that I could very well just throw him off on someone, you right. know, and, and go hard in the paint to be this ferocious artist as well. But I've chosen not to even do that because I, I just, I have a lot of mom guilt. I'm like, I can't do it. And I, I mean, and we talk about bringing him with us. So eventually he's just going to be on the road with mom and dad, which makes the most sense probably anyway. Right. Um, Cause we just want to have our eyes on him since my mom is no longer, you know, here. Um, you know, I'm just so overprotective. So it's just like, well, I guess you just got to come with me and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's but, terrible. You know, in or- no, it's not. I love it. Keep on doing it. Love yeah. on your children. Let That's me tell you right. because- Life is too short. I don't, this space that we're in is scary to me because people are here today and then gone by tonight. It's exactly. scary. So love on it. Zach as much as you can. And Thank another you. way that you chose to love on Zach, you penned a children's book in honor yes. of your son, Zach. Zach's yes. favorite socks. Talk about I that. Did. I'm so excited about that. It was something that, um, so I always kind of wanted to do something more for children other than just music. And so I'm like, what else can I do? You know, um, I established the foundation. That's okay. That's cool. It's like, not okay like that. That's more than okay. It's awesome. It's, it's nonprofit work. And so that was just really to raise awareness. So I was like, okay, but now what else can I do creatively? You know? Um, and so I love rhyming books, you know, like Dr. Seuss, Cat in a Hat. I love rhyming books. I always have. So I was like, well, I'm going to write a a rhyming book. So Zach loves collecting books. He has tons of books, but he does not like to read them. He just (laughs) likes to look at the pictures and 
Um, he didn't even like me to read to them, read, read them anymore to him when he was smaller. But you know, as we said, he's 14 and moody. So he'd be looking at me like, don't touch my books, leave them where they are and don't try to read them to me. <laughs> he's so funny. But, um, I was thinking like, you know what? I think it'd be really cool to add to his collection, like a book that his mom wrote, that mommy wrote, you know, and this character is based on him. Um, I want it to be a series. I'm going to do another one. And it's really just to kind of introduce Autism. I didn't really speak about it in this book specifically yet, um, but I want to, and this character actually is verbal, you know, so it's kind of the opposite of my son, but as we know, autism is a broad spectrum. So yeah. um, I want to, you know, do another one, a continuation and kind of like a series and then another um, children's album to kind of go alongside it. And, you know, just something to hopefully um, create for other parents with, with uh, kids on the spectrum or just special needs children who mm -hmm. enjoy hearing books, who enjoy reading books, not like my son, but <laughs> who could be like my son, who just likes to collect them and keep, keep them Look in you know, them. order and systematic order. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but it makes me feel so good this is, that I did it. This is so necessary, Mila. Let me just tell you, this is definitely going to leave another one of your footprints in this life. Thank what you. most people don't know is I'm also an educator. I've been an educator for 20 oh, plus lovely. years. Thank you. Director of my high school, working with special needs children. Oh, thank you. And the lack of awareness that's out there, it is staggering that these concerns or mm -hmm. developmental delays in children, it didn't just start yesterday, but the information no. and resources are so limited that people don't, parents don't really know how to tap into it. So you have just really, really helped another population of people and you don't even know it. So I need to tell you. Well, thank you. That you are helping people. I went to my school. It's a, I work at a high school. I went there and I said, listen, if you have any small children, mm. please join this organization called mm. Proud. Oh, Here is information, you. resources that you need. Someone who looks like us. Yes, <laughs> I know. I, it, it, it's mind blowing. Um, I'm still learning every day, you know, but what I have learned in my 14 years of dealing with this with Zach, it's ever changing. You know, they change as they get older. Sometimes they make progress. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they make pro progress and then regress. And then, you know, it, 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 it's a daily back and forth, you know, with children on the spectrum. But as you mentioned, even if these children, even if they're not on the autism spectrum, there are developmental delays, which, which constitute to learning disabilities, which equate to IEPs. And we don't all know our parental rights and we don't all understand, you know, what we can add or subtract from these IEPs, these individualized educational plans for our children. We have the rights. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning, but I know that there's a lot of times especially like you said, folks that look at, like us, we get overlooked or we get, you know, hushed as the parents. They just want to, you know, they just want to move on and get your child through the day. And they don't feel like taking the time out to really get to the bottom of what it is that your child's strengths and or weaknesses are that will help them to have a more helpful, calming experience while they're at school. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's stressful for those babies. Yeah. My son is not severe, but he's not mild either. You know, he's um out here. I don't know about in 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 Vegas or where you're. Where you're in Vegas, right? Yeah, I don't know yeah. about how. Oh, okay. Why did I think? I just swear everybody's from Vegas. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's different everywhere. Here in Georgia, there's different levels. So he's like ASD two, level two, and um, so he's not fully dependent on an uh, on on any on an adult but he's not fully in independent you right. know he's not fully codependent but not fully independent so he still needs a lot of help but he's come a long way but we're still having to um gosh do so many things he's 14 but he still is uh he still has to be prompted for a lot of things most things you know and he still is developmentally uh, in terms of his comprehension on a maybe third grade level maybe depends mm -hmm. Um, gosh, so it's just, it's, it's, it's interest, interesting to say the least of how these school, these, these educational institutions, um, mm -hmm. you know, they marginalize our special education children Yeah, and we don't have a large voice. Mm -hmm. Um, in Georgia though, I, I will say 
the reason I am still here is because they do offer a lot um, for children on the spectrum and for special needs kids. There are a lot of great programs out here and mm -hmm. they, and they are free. Um, they are, uh, we've, you know, we've never even, we've never been in a, a tuition based school. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked to even say that out loud, but that's how, that's how God works. Cause I didn't even know how much I was going to be. And I ended up living right around the corner. I moved here from California and literally right around the corner from my house is this regular elementary school, just a normal elementary, but they had a program for pre-K kids mm. who were not, uh, not, not diagnosed with autism yet, but were just developmental, developmentally delayed. Mm -hmm. For three and four year olds, who knew? And my child was, you know, we hadn't mm -hmm. even gotten diagnosed yet. But mm -hmm. he could go to this elementary school right around the corner at three years old because he has some delays. And I was doing research and I realized I'm like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a whole cluster where the elementary, the um, middle school and the pre and the high school that he'll be going to all have. Um, Special ed well, we know they all have special education, but all have courses for children on the spectrum from K gotcha. yes, from K through twelve. And the curriculum is great and it's in a great area. And I was just like, look at like how, how did that happen? Yeah. Nothing <laughs> you know? but God, I'm telling you, but you bring up a very good point because I had to do the same thing when my daughter was a little bit in elementary school. I had took her, taken her out of private school, but I always wanted to move to in a neighborhood or area that had resources for free yes. instead of paying this tuition. It's there, mm -hmm. it's available. People just have to do research. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, just make sure that I magnify that point to parents out there who are looking for services for their children. Oftentimes you don't have to pay for it. Do your research. It yeah. is there. They just don't want us it to find. It takes time. Out. They don't. It you have to time. be diligent. Yeah. It, it takes time, and it does get overwhelming. It does get uh, tedious and tiring and frustrating for parents, especially if you're a new parent. You know, when I was a new parent, oh gosh, I, I had, I had no. There's no guidebook for any of us, but you know, I'm just like googling and googling and googling and researching, researching, re researching, and sometimes you do have to dig deep to find those grants and those. Um, scholarships, you know, right. for, for maybe the schools that are, are tuition based because, Hey, maybe there isn't anything in your area um, that's, that's free and, or that is, you know, uh, conducive to the betterment of your child's development. So maybe you do have to go somewhere that where you have to pay. Um, but gosh, man, it's, 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 it's really, it's so layered. It is because they're all so different and every, all of our children need different things. Um, I know like at my son's school, they do, you know, autism, uh, those who are like um, advanced, you know, like my son is not high main, uh, um, not high function, not high main. I'm, I'm thinking about his mother, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> high functioning, but they have like all different levels and then they have kids who are um, Downs, you know, with Down syndrome, they have that, their program there as well. For, it, it's just really cool, man, to see the breakdown um, they offer all the therapies, but like with my son, it's cool that they offer therapy at school, but he needs more therapy, you know? So I have to go outside of school and do both and do the private therapies as well. Just do your research. If you, if you can get on state funded, you know, things in, in your state and, and, and cities or what have you like Medicaid, like, yes, apply for all of those things. Don't be ashamed to do it. Um, you know, it's it's our children's rights, and they they yeah. they they can have these things. They can have um, what's due to them. Like I had to learn that the hard way. Like the 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 the, the uh, like the social security and all that type of stuff. You know, it's. It. I had a woman tell me she 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 told me at therapy. She said, "I'm going to be honest. We don't know about these programs." She was a black woman, and she said, "I probably shouldn't be saying this to you because I work here." She said, "But I see a lot of the white." families and parents come in who are well to do and they get all this help mm -hmm. you know they apply for these certain waivers and these certain things and and they get these you know all of these special um just different types of programs that they get like 
discounts and <laughs> you mm -hmm. know all of these different and, and 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 it's sad because those families that do really need these types of resources and help we either don't know about it or we just give up so easily because they do make it hard sometimes yeah they do so if people aren't able to find resources on their own i do want to point them in your direction your organization proud which stands for parents reaching out to understand developmental delays? Yes. How mm -hmm. can they how can they join? So right now Proud is just Proud has a, a, a Facebook page, um, The Proud Inc. on Facebook. And you know, it's really just you can go on there and inbox me. I I'll check it and I read them and I definitely try and get back to everybody. Um the thing with Proud is that when I started it, you know, I was so active. And there was a vigor in me to really just be a voice for parents who didn't have a voice, especially because at the time I was doing uh, reality TV and I, I was so just kind of, I wasn't sure I wanted to share my story because that's sacred. It's very private, you know, it's your child. Um, but I'm, I'm so happy that, that I did because I, I ended up getting all this new traffic of mothers, young mothers who have children on the spectrum. But when I tell you, I learned from them and they motivated me because there, there are parents out there that have not one, I only have one, that, but two and three yeah. children on the spectrum. And I didn't even know that that was possible, you happen. know, man. And, and so, um, so I established proud to just be a voice and they said, thank you just for using your platform, just to be a voice for, for those of us that don't have a voice. Yeah. So Zach was really little and I, I, I had done a few concerts and um, a few of my musical peers came and we did some fundraising and um, you know like I said one of them being Donnell at one of them and um, something I did for parents like a mixer to just it's like a let your hair down you know after five for special needs parents it was so cool but I haven't done any events in, in, a, in a while because I'll be honest I went through a hard time I went through a hard time for a while mm -hmm. and um, this is my child walking in and <laughs> um <laughs> It, it got things got real, you know, it got mm. tough. Mm. It got tough. And uh, his dad and I separated and I was a single mom. And okay. thank God I had my mom, but um, it just got hard. And so, OK, thank you, Zach. You can you can turn it off. You can hang up. <laughs> um, I just kind of gave up. Mm. Thank you. Close the door, bud. And um, I love seeing all of this. I love to see you <laughs> having an interview. I'm looking at him like, oh, <laughs> child. <laughs> This is what she walked mother, in with the iPad, but I understand what was just happening. That was my sister's voice. So Auntie called because Auntie can't get through. She's trying okay. to figure out where is your mother. She's just making sure everything's good. We're good over here. Yes. Um. She knows I do interviews and stuff here and there. So she. But if she can't reach me, she'll Facetime. <laughs> it takes a village. So yeah. Anyway, it was. <laughs> I got discouraged, and that's not to discourage anyone, but I just like to be as transparent as possible. Cause I don't want to be up here. Like it's so easy cause right. it's not always easy. It gets tough. And I got a little, um, discouraged episode, <laughs> but I'm back now. I'm, I'm, I'm rejuvenated. Um, so proud is going to do some great things in the future. We're planning to do, um, uh, proud in the park here in Georgia at some point. And, uh, um, I have some folks out in Vegas that I've been consulting with to do something grand in Las Vegas, my hometown, um, for special needs, because I haven't done that and they deserve it. Um, so at least we're starting with the book. I'm going to be in yeah. Vegas this, this fall and I'm going to do, uh, I, I've done so far book signing in Tampa, Florida, here in Atlanta, of course, and then Vegas is up next. So I'm really excited about that. So where can people purchase the book? Zach's so the book, the, yes, thank you in advance for those have already, that have already um, purchased. <laughs> thank y'all so much for the support. So it's on, it's only online uh, right now, um, but it, when, it, it will be in stores. When I do in stores, they're always in store for me to sign for you, you know, a signed copy. But you can go to barnesandnobles.com and purchase it online. And also, of course, Amazon. I know we got some primers out there who love their Amazon. So it's also on Amazon. Amazon. Um, but you have to, on Amazon, you have to type it in Zach's Favorite Socks book. Got Zach's it. Favorite Socks book on Amazon. So, yeah, it's on Amazon.com, Zach's Favorite Socks book, and BarnesandNobles.com and type in Zach's Favorite Socks. 
Yes. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Well, everyone, <laughs> make sure that you go out online and purchase Zach's favorite socks. And if you're looking for more information, a village of people, a parent who are navigating the world of mothering or parenting a child with developmental delays, please make yeah. sure that you reach out to Proud on Facebook. Um, but the fans, we're here for it. Um, they were Thank cheering you. you on when you were performing at Carnegie Hall recently. Yes, it was so awesome. Thank you. Yes, it was, man, I'm still pinching myself. Like that was a pinch me moment for sure. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Carnegie Hall is such a huge deal to me. Like that's a career highlight. Like. You know, I'm like underrated. Where, excuse me, I was yes. just at Carnegie Hall. Like, <laughs> no, one of my no, friends, but like, that's huge. Like, it was. we weren't even allowed to perform there as black folks, right? Like, at yeah. this one point, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm like, that was that to me, like, it resonated. Like, I'm like, my, my grandmother and my mother watching me from heaven, and you know, all of our you know, ancestors, like, I brown me, you know chocolate brown me is on the stage yes. <laughs> you know yeah. so it was awesome that was so fun and um we did ushers lovers and friends festival which is super huge as well and i mean this is only his second year doing it and we were invited this year and gosh mm -hmm. the, the turnout was so awesome oh my gosh that was it was just it was amazing just to see all those people out there that they showed up for us and they knew all the lyrics and they were on their feet all the uh -huh. time and it was just it, it's a it's a great feeling you know let me tell I have a message for you because one of my friends, she was seated in the audience at Carnegie Hall. And when she found out that I was having a conversation with you mm -hmm. today, she said, mm -hmm. tell Mila that she gave me life. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I said, thank you, girl, because I was stressed out leading up to it. I was so nervous. <laughs> she was so, just like, you. you look amazing. Your outfit. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, you There's such a backstory with all that, but thank you so much. We will leave it in the closet. <laughs> Gosh, I'm like, if these people knew the behind the scenes, woo! Thank you. Thank you. Tell your friend thank you so much. That makes me feel so great because it was, um, you know, as females, we go through a lot just trying to pre prepare for things. And, um, you know, I recently just, I'm coming out of a really dark place from losing my mother. And, yeah. um, gosh, I, 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 I just... I had a hard time at the top of the year. So now with God blessing me with all of these blessings with 702 being super busy and I just, I'm so grateful, you know, I'm grateful yeah. to God because I know it's him and my mom up there like, all right, let me put her on the road, back on the road. Yes. <laughs> so yes. tell her, thank you, yes. honey. I'm trying to continue to get my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we just have another angel yes. that is standing right beside you, rooting you mm -hmm. on and, you know, continuing to help God order your steps. So thank, Mila, you. thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being authentic. Thank you for being unapologetically true. Thank you for sharing your challenges with us because we need to show the world that we as women, sometimes we could take off the cape. We're real. We have yes. real issues. But yet and still, you know, we have to rest for a moment and then we can get mm -hmm. right back in the race. That's right. That's right. And we're just happy that y'all are happy to see us. You know, yes. we just, just want to bless the people. Yeah. Blessing the people you are. So like I, I had a story about my friend in the audience at Carnegie Hall. My daughter <laughs> and I, who's 28, we are blasting your music. Thank all the you. Time. She Thank also you wanted so me to tell you hello. You've touched so many people. <laughs> Mila, and I really just want you to understand that. Continue blessings, you. my queen, my sister. You are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I needed you today. Thank you. <laughs> I really did. I, I, I'm still, and, and God bless you because this grief thing, I, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I would not wish this thing on anyone. So God bless you and condolences again. Thank Seriously. you. Yes. So you take care and continue Thank blessings. You. Thank you. Bye -bye. Same to you. Yes. Being that my son has barged in my room, I guess that's my cue. So thank you. And wait a minute, that's what mommy gets because I usually lock the door when I'm doing interviews. <laughs> I forgot today. So <laughs> anywho, but yes, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Amazing, amazing conversation. I loved it. I absolutely love talking to individuals who aren't afraid to have real conversations. I'm struggling. I'm in the middle of mourning. I needed to take a mental break. 
I needed to sit down. I was navigating through some some issues. I broke up with my man, but you know, we're still parenting. I love that she shared it all with us because these are the type of conversations that we need to hear. And this is the purpose of Sonia on air to unpack celebrity pivotal moments and milestones. And she unpacked them all. Oftentimes as, as celebrities, you look at them and you just see them performing for you on television or on the movie screens, or you hear their music coming through the speakers when you're in the car or in your home. And you kind of dehumanize them as if they don't have any feelings, as if they are so far removed from the human experience like us. They put on their pants the same way you and I do, one leg at a time. So this is why you all need to stay tuned in to sign your air so that you can understand these celebrities a lot better. I'm having the conversations that a lot of platforms aren't, or sometimes even the celebrities aren't even starting themselves because sometimes you all ain't even checking for it. You want something that's salacious, and this is not what we do here at Sign You On Air. So do me a favor, once again, um, make sure that you subscribe to Sign You On Air, which streams across every major streaming platform. If you are watching this on YouTube, not only subscribe, but make sure that you hit the notification button. And you saw the commercials previously. If you're looking to promote your brand on a digital billboard, make sure that you email me at Sonya at SonyaOnAir.net. Looking for some amazing merchandise. Sonya On Air has some empowering merchandise for you. Um, make a statement. You don't have to talk. The clothing will speak for itself. So make sure that you look for the Sonya On Air merch in the description section of this episode and get your shop on. Um, what else do I have? So I talked about the billboard. I talked about the Sign On Air merch. Also, shop Instacart using the special Sign you On Air link. And um, I think that's all that I have for you. You know, I had some other questions planned for Mila, but I intentionally, I said, let me just let this conversation just take on a life of its own. God just used me. God just used me. And I'm this glad to say that I had a very nice conversation. So 702 is here to stay. 20 something years in the game. Grown women like me are still singing their, the songs. Me. Our children are singing the songs. They're making these videos on TikTok. Are Keep this group alive and well so that the generations come up next, they can also enjoy the music of 702. But you don't know the pain that I feel. Second time. This show. Anyway, this has been another amazing edition of Sonia Onia. Thank you so much for tuning in. Smooches Dolls. Take care.